Good morning, Doctor. How are you today? Well, mostly okay. Your learning objectives for mastering the head-to-toe assessment of older adults are to adjust your interview techniques and office environment to the needs of older adults, to learn the importance of functional assessment and screening for preventing falls, to master the skills of physical examination for older adults. Older patients experience physiological changes over time that require the attentive clinician to make specific adjustments to the examining room and their techniques of interviewing. Provide a well-lit, moderately warm setting with minimal background noise and safe chairs and access to the examining table. Face the patient and speak in low tones. Make sure the patient is using glasses, hearing devices, and dentures if needed. Adjust the pace and content of the interview to the stamina of the patient. Allow time for open-ended questions and reminiscing. Listening to this process of life review provides important insights into the older adult's outlook and health concerns. Include family caregivers when needed, especially if the patient has cognitive impairment. Make use of the useful brief screening instruments for geriatrics, the past medical record and listing of medications, and reports from allied disciplines. Carefully assess symptoms, especially fatigue, loss of appetite, dizziness, weight loss, and pain for clues to underlying disorders and geriatric syndromes like falls. Make sure written instructions are in large print and easy to read. During your discussion, assess the patient's ability for self-care to learn if the patient can perform various activities independently, needs help, or is entirely dependent on others. Mr. Norman, do you need any assistance in the mornings with dressing or bathing? Ask about the patient's capacity to perform activities of daily living, or ADLs, consisting of basic self-care abilities such as bathing, dressing, toileting, transferring, continence, and feeding. Do you go shopping by yourself and prepare your own meals? Then move on to inquiries about the patient's capacity for instrumental activities of daily living, or IADLs. These include higher level functions, such as using the telephone, shopping, preparing food, housekeeping, laundry, transportation, managing money, and especially taking medicine. Approximately 80% of older adults take at least one prescription drug each day. Roughly 30% take more than eight prescribed drugs each day. Be sure to take a thorough medication history for each drug, including the medication's name, dose, frequency, and indications. Explore all components of polypharmacy leading to suboptimal prescribing including concurrent use of multiple drugs, underuse, inappropriate use, and non-adherence. Ask about use of over-the-counter medications, vitamin and nutrition supplements, and mood-altering drugs. Assess medications for drug interactions. Mr. Norman, I notice you're rubbing your leg a lot. Are you having some pain in your leg? As pain and associated complaints account for 40% to 80% of clinicians' visits, learn to distinguish acute pain from chronic pain and thoroughly investigate its cause. Pain usually arises from musculoskeletal complaints, such as back and joint pain. Oh, I feel creaky in the mornings, but I tend to get around okay. Be aware that older patients may be reluctant to report painful symptoms. They may even overestimate their healthiness. The patient may be embarrassed, afraid, or eager to avoid medical expenses or the discomfort associated with treatment. For these reasons, it is best to utilize open-ended questions that encourage patients to talk about their state of health. Questions might include, Do you have any special concerns today? Or, are you having any pain or discomfort in your daily activities, Mr. Norman? At each visit, 
Advise your elderly patients who smoke to quit, as quitting is a crucial step to reducing risks for lung cancer and heart disease. Oh, I like to have a drink at dinner time, maybe two. Because adults over 65 experience physiologic changes that amplify harm from alcohol, no more than three drinks on any occasion or seven drinks a week are recommended. Also keep in mind that alcohol causes adverse reactions with many medications and impairs mentation and driving. Ask about meals and daily intake of foods and liquids. I'm really not a big eater, but I do love my bacon. Mm -hmm. A diet history and use of the nutrition screening checklist are especially important in older adults as prevalence of undernutrition increases with age. Look for frailty, which is characterized by loss of muscle mass, decreased energy, and exercise intolerance. And since at least one-third of adults 65 years or older fall at least once a year, it is important to identify high-risk adults and suggest ways to prevent falls in the future. Mr. Norman, have you prepared your advanced directives or do you have a durable power of attorney? Encourage the older patient to express their wishes about end-of-life decisions, and if they have not prepared any advanced care planning, provide information, explore the patient's preferences, and identify proxy decision-makers while at all times conveying empathy and support. Be aware of the cultural dimensions of aging, diet, and family relationships. By 2050, one in three older adults will be African American, Hispanic, Asian American, or American Indian. Your assessment of the older adult calls for enhanced interviewing techniques and functional assessment, sometimes called the sixth vital sign. By using the 10-minute geriatric screener, you can quickly and effectively assess the cognitive, psychosocial, and physical function of the older patient. This includes screening for vision, hearing, leg mobility, urinary incontinence, nutrition and weight loss, memory, depression, and physical disability. Searching for the usual unifying diagnosis may pertain to less than 50% of older adults. Therefore, managing the increasing number of interrelated conditions common to older patients calls for recognizing the symptom clusters typical of different geriatric syndromes. Geriatric syndromes or conditions include delirium, cognitive impairment, falls, dizziness, depression, urinary incontinence, and functional impairment. Clinicians need to learn about these syndromes because one symptom may relate to several others in a pattern unfamiliar to the patient. With the patient's health history in mind and after good hand hygiene, you are ready for the physical examination. Weight and height are especially important in the elderly and are needed for calculation of the body mass index. Deepen your observations about the patient that you have been gathering since the visit began with a careful general survey. What is the patient's apparent state of health and degree of vitality? What is the person's mood and affect? How does he walk and move on to the examining table? Is screening for cognitive changes needed? Note the patient's hygiene. Significant shortening of a patient's height is usually obvious by old age. Are there changes in his posture or involuntary movements? Now measure vital signs beginning with blood pressure using recommended techniques. Check for increased systolic blood pressure and widened pulse pressure, defined as systolic blood pressure minus diastolic blood pressure. Assess for orthostatic hypotension, defined as a drop in systolic blood pressure of greater than or equal to 20 millimeters of mercury a drop in diastolic blood pressure of greater than or equal to 10 millimeters of mercury, or a gain in heart rate of 20 beats per minute within three minutes of standing. Measure blood pressure and heart rate in two positions. 
Supine after the patient rests for up to 10 minutes, then within three minutes as he stands. Measure heart rate, respiratory rate, and temperature. With older patients, the apical method may yield more information about arrhythmias. Obtain oxygen saturation using a pulse oximeter. Inspect the patient's skin. Note physiologic changes of aging, such as thinning, loss of elastic tissue and turgor, and wrinkling. There may be purple patches or macules, termed actinic purpura, that fade over time. These spots and patches come from blood that has leaked through poorly supported capillaries and spread within the dermis. Inspect for the benign lesions of aging, such as comedones or blackheads on the cheeks or around the eyes. Look for cherry angiomas and seborrheic keratoses, raised yellowish lesions that feel greasy and velvety or warty. These are benign. In older bedbound patients, inspect the skin also for pressure sores or ulceration. Next, conduct a careful inspection and palpation of the head and neck. With age, scalp hair loses its pigment, producing graying. Hair loss on the scalp is genetically determined. Inspect the eyelids, the bony orbit, and the eye. The eye may appear recessed from atrophy of the fat in the surrounding tissues. Observe any senile ptosis arising from the weakening of the levator palpebrae, relaxation of the skin, and increased weight of the upper eyelid. Note yellowing of the sclera and arcus senilis, a benign whitish ring around the limbus. Test visual acuity using a Snellen chart. Note any presbyopia, the loss of near vision arising from decreased elasticity of the lens related to aging. The pupil should respond to light and near effort. Except for possible impairment in upward gaze, extraocular movement should remain intact. With an ophthalmoscope, carefully inspect the lenses and fundi. Inspect each lens carefully for any opacity. Do not depend on the flashlight alone because the lens may look clear superficially. In older adults, the fundi lose their youthful shine and light reflections, and the arteries typically look narrower, paler, straighter, and less brilliant. Assess the cup to disc ratio, usually one to two or less. Inspect the fundi for macular degeneration with colloid bodies causing alterations in pigmentation called drusen. Test hearing by occluding one ear and using the techniques for whispered voice or use an audioscope. Be sure to inspect the ear canals for cerumen because removal can quickly improve hearing. Examine the oral cavity for odor, appearance, and gingival mucosa, any caries, mobility of the teeth, and quantity of saliva. Inspect closely for lesions on any of the mucosal surfaces. Ask the patient to remove dentures so you can check the gums for denture sores. Continue with your usual examination of the thyroid gland and lymph nodes. Complete the usual examination of the thorax and lungs, making note of subtle signs of changes in pulmonary function. As people age, their capacity for exercise decreases. The chest wall becomes stiffer and harder to move. Respiratory muscles may weaken and the lungs lose some of their elastic recoil. As you assess the cardiovascular system, review the patient's blood pressure and heart rate. Inspect the jugular venous pressure, palpate the carotid upstrokes, and listen for any overlying carotid bruise. Assess the point of maximal impulse, or PMI. Then auscultate S1 and S2. Listen also for the extra sounds of S3 and S4. Beginning at the second right interspace, the aortic area, listen for cardiac murmurs in all six areas of auscultation, including the upper left interspace or pulmonic area, then down the left sternal border, and across to the apex, 
where the murmur of mitral regurgitation is best heard. Describe the timing, shape location of maximal intensity, radiation, intensity, pitch, and quality of any murmur that you detect. For systolic murmurs over the clavicle, check for delay between the brachial and radial pulses seen in aortic stenosis. Palpate the breasts carefully for lumps or masses in both male and female older adults. Include palpation of the breast tissue that extends into the axilla, called the tail of spents. Examine the axillae for lymphadenopathy. Note any scaly vesicular ulcerated lesions on or near the nipple, suspicious for Paget's disease. While the techniques of examination for men and women patients are similar, the female breast is usually more dense and its examination should therefore be more thorough, palpating in small concentric circles in a vertical strip pattern. Continue your usual examination of the abdomen. Check for any bruise over the right renal artery, then the left, and the right femoral artery, then the left. Inspect the upper abdomen. Palpate to the left of the midline for any aortic pulsations. Try to assess the width of the aorta by pressing more deeply with one hand on each of its lateral margins, checking for width more than 3 cm or a pulsatile presence of an abdominal aortic aneurysm, especially in male smokers. Complete your examination of the peripheral vascular system by carefully palpating the radial, femoral, and pedal pulses. If pulses are diminished, consider checking the ankle brachial index and ask about claudication. For older men, examine the penis, retracting the foreskin if present. Examine the scrotum, testes, and epididymis as you would for a younger male. Proceed with the rectal exam, paying special attention to any rectal masses and any nodularity or masses of the prostate. Note that the anterior and median lobes of the prostate are inaccessible to rectal palpation, limiting the utility of the digital rectal examination for detecting prostate enlargement or possible malignancy. Keep in mind that symptoms of urinary hesitancy, dribbling, and incomplete emptying may arise from causes other than benign prostatic hyperplasia which is the proliferation of prostate epithelial and stromal tissue. These other causes include prostate cancer, medications, and lower urinary tract abnormalities like urethral stricture. For the female genitalia and pelvic examination, take special care to explain the steps of the examination and allow time for careful positioning. For the woman with arthritis or spinal deformities, who cannot flex her hips or knees, ask an assistant to help with positioning the older patient and raise the head of the table to make the examination more comfortable. Inspect the vulva for changes related to menopause, such as thinning of the skin, loss of pubic hair, and decreased distensibility of the introitus. Identify any labial masses. Note that bluish swellings may be varicosities. Bulging of the anterior vaginal wall below the urethra may indicate a urethraceal or urethral diverticulum. Look for any vulvar erythema. Inspect the urethra for caruncles or prolapse of fleshy erythematous mucosal tissue at the urethral meatus. Note any enlargement of the clitoris. Spread the labia press downward on the introitus to relax the levator muscles and enlarge the vaginal opening and gently insert the speculum after moistening it with warm water or a water-soluble lubricant. If you find severe vaginal atrophy, a gaping introitus, or an introidal stricture from estrogen loss, you will need to vary the size of the speculum. Inspect the vaginal walls, which may be atrophic, and the cervix. Note any thin cervical mucus, suggesting use of hormone replacement therapy, 
or vaginal or cervical discharge that warrants culture. Use an endocervical broom or a wooden spatula and brush to obtain endocervical cells for the pap smear. Consider using a blind swab if the atrophic vagina is too narrow. After removing the speculum, ask the patient to bear down to detect uterine prolapse, cystocele, urethraceal, or rectocele. Perform the bimanual examination. Check for motion of the cervix and for any uterine or adnexal masses. The ovary should be non-palpable. Perform the rectovaginal examination if indicated. Assess for uterine and adnexal irregularities through the anterior rectal wall and check for rectal masses. Change gloves if blood from the bimanual examination is on the examining glove to obtain an accurate stool sample. When assessing both the musculoskeletal and nervous system, begin with the 10-minute geriatric screener and include the Get Up and Go test, which helps determine leg mobility. Ask the patient to get up from a chair, walk 10 feet, turn, and return to the chair. Most older adults can complete this test in 10 seconds. Times longer than that correlate with poor functional independence and higher risk of falls. Your thorough musculoskeletal examination should include the temporomandibular joints, neck, shoulders, hands, wrists, and elbows. Inspect and palpate the joints, then check their range of motion. For the nervous system, start with the 10-minute geriatric screener and pursue further examination if you note any deficits especially in memory and affect. I want you to touch your finger, your left index finger, to your nose, and then put that down and touch your right index finger to your nose, and then do that again. Pay close attention to gait and balance, particularly standing balance. Also, assess the results of a timed eight-foot walk, noting stride characteristics, width, pace, length of stride, and careful turning. Although neurologic abnormalities are common in the older population, their prevalence without identifiable disease increases with age. Examples of physiologic changes of aging include unequal pupil size, decreased arm swing and spontaneous movements, increased leg rigidity and abnormal gait, presence of the snout and grasp reflexes, and decreased toe vibratory sense. Search for evidence of flexed posture, tremor, rigidity, bradykinesia, micrographia, shuffling gait, and difficulty rising from a chair, suspicious for Parkinson's disease. Frequently, the clinician must try to distinguish age-related changes in mental status from manifestations of specific mental disorders whose prevalence increases with aging such as depression and dementia. If you note any deficits, especially in memory and affect, conduct a more detailed mental status examination and make use of helpful screening tools for dementia, such as the mini-COG or the mini mental status examination. Remember that a clear, well-organized clinical record employing language that is neutral, professional, and succinct is one of the most important adjuncts to patient care. Mr. Norman is an older adult who appears healthy if somewhat underweight, but with good muscle bulk. He is alert and interactive with a good recall of his life history. After practice and further review of this video, make sure you have mastered the important learning objectives for examining the fastest growing segment of our population, older adults.